Thank you. So I'm Dr. Joshua Dara Chaudhary. I uh, am a junior faculty of Bangor Institute of Neurosciences. So I'll be doing the basic electromyography. The overview will be when it is required, at all required or not, the equipments that we use, how to choose the muscles, how to prepare the patient, few spontaneous activities, and uh, then the MUAP analysis. So uh, when it is required for any kind of lower motor neuron type of weakness, to confirm whether there is myopathy, to locate where the muscles are weak, the proximally distally, whether it is symmetric or asymmetric, uh, what is the kind of severity. Another use is to determine the site of biopsy. We usually do it on the contralateral side of the weak muscle and we choose the same muscle. So the points to be considered before EMG, EMG or electrodiagnostics for per se is not to substitute root history or clinical examination. Nowadays, uh, Duchenne, SMA, uh, the genetics have replaced e uh, electrodiagnostics and we straight away go for genetics. The yield of needle EMG increases if we study clinically weak muscles and clinics will guide us to that. So the equipments uh, that we use is EMG machine, a needle, a needle cable, a ground electrode, gloves and cotton, and obviously a sterile environment. So what do we do? We uh, will see in the video, the EMG needle is connected to a cable and plugged into the EMG machine. The needle uh, may be of two types, concentric or monopolar. We use concentric that has got the uh, active and reference electrodes in the same side. And actually what it is recorded, an electric potential, which is a difference between the active and reference electrodes. Young children do have poor tolerability and it is often possible that the patient will allow only one or two muscles to be sampled. So how to choose that? We will do the clinics and NCS can help us to choose the muscle. Then ease with which the muscle can be recorded. For example, tibial is anterior and gastrocnemius will give us the same yield, but tibial is anterior is an easier muscle to record. And also the degree of pain. Uh, some muscles, for example, uh, abductor pollicis brevis is more uh, painful than the similar muscle like flexor digitalis. So it is uh, very important to choose the muscle. So how to patient the, uh, prepare the patient, explain the procedure, select the muscle, do the anatomic landmarks, show the patient how to activate, palpate the muscle during contraction and then yeah, so multiple muscle fibers. I'm not going into the details we, uh, because of shortage of time. We'll just show the spontaneous activity and how does it look on the screen. So how to analyze this? We do this based on the morphology, stability, and the firing characteristics. Morphology, maybe these are the types, uh, miniature end plate potentials, the muscle fiber brief spikes, Multiple muscle fibers, motor units, this may come. The, we uh, must uh, differentiate according to the morphology. The stability stable or unstable. And uh, unstable ones we find in the myotonias, the waxing, waning things. And the firing characteristics, maybe very slow, slow, fast, very fast. And the patterns. And uh, these are the types. Suppose there's an end plate noise seen coming from the neuromuscular junction. This is the end plate region from uh, the anatomic location. Will it sound like C cell or hissing sound? And it's a normal thing. So this is the kind it will look. This is the tracing how it will look. And on the monitor, how will we see that? Uh, we will see a tracing going on. So next is the fibrillation potential that comes from a muscle fiber. It is usually regular, stable. It sounds like rain on a tin roof and it means denervation. So you see that it comes from this place, the muscle fiber. And it looks like this. Initially a positive, then a negative, then a, it's a regular like. So in a tracing, it looks like this. You can see the regularity. And on the screen, it looks like this. Again, you can see the regularity, how it is coming. And initially there's a positive wave. So this is again a positive sharp wave. It also comes from the muscle uh, fiber. It denotes denervation. It sounds like dull pops. It's more or less regular and stable. 
the only difference with the previous one the uh, there is a slow negative phase so this is a positive sharp wave as seen in the uh, tracing and now we this is a myotonic discharge which again comes from muscle fiber there's a waxing waning uh, characteristic to that if we listen that the sound will be like raving engine and seen in myotonic dystrophic myotonia congenita so these are the characteristics and if you see the tracing this is the waxing waning pattern so you see it is going up and down going up and down so here on the screen this is the pattern that we see and there is associated sound the sound is very important this is a another spontaneous activity the complex uh, repetitive discharge it involves multiple muscle fibers previously th those were from single fibers so this is multiple muscle it gives a sound like machinery sound it denotes denervation then reinnervation followed by denervation again it is seen in chronic neuropathy or myopathy with denervation so how does it uh, look like it is this kind of uh, thing there is a uh, timing there are multiple muscle fibers involved so on a tracing it will look like this now coming to a fasciculation potential that comes from a neuronal axon that is irregular and it's a corn popping sound it is classically seen in motor neuron disease or neuropathy or radiculopathy so it will look like this so you see the there's a spectrum of abnormal spontaneous activity seen in uh, motor nerve or neuron fasciculations doublets triplets multiplets myoclemia cramps and neuromyotonia not going into details because of lack of time now the most important thing is the motor unit action potential uh, what uh, do we assess we assess the morphology the duration amplitude and phase we assess the stability we assess the firing characteristics based on these things we uh, determine whether it is neuropathic or myopathic acute or chronic what is muap that is the extracellular needle emg recording of a single motor unit is the muap what is a motor unit then it's a motor neuron it's axon it's neuromuscular junction and the muscle fiber so muap duration it is the most important parameter in de uh, determining whether it's a myopathy uh, what does it depend on the total number of muscle fibers dispersion of their depolarization de over the time and the distance and the conduction velocity so you see the in the normal so many muscle fibers are working in myopathy there are less number so the normal duration is 5 to 15 milliseconds what happens physiologically muap duration increases with age so in our books we have a reference of uh, muap is that uh, changes from neonatal age to older ages and we have seen that at around 6 uh, to 7 years the lower uh, limit becomes equivalent almost equivalent to the adult limits so there is inverse relationship to the temperature and myopathic pattern what we happen the most important thing is the decrease map duration it is seen in chronic myopathies and some maps even in myopathy may be low for that we need to do a quantitative map analysis also apart from myopathy there are few other conditions like uh, myasthenia and uh, terminal axon disease that may le lead to decreased map duration now coming to amplitude which varies with needle position most uh, normally it's 100 microvolt to 2 millivolt in myopathy the amplitude is typically reduced next coming to the phases it indicates the synchrony uh, which means that the degree of muscle fibers which fire simultaneously if it is abnormal it is more than four phases so you see this is a, a low amplitude short duration polyphasic maps seen in myopathy again coming to that the stability usually stable morphology uh, from potential to potential depends on the transmission across the nmj to muscle fibers
so the firing pattern is also an important thing the two methods of increasing force is the increasing firing frequency and involving more motor units one is activation and one is the recruitment the ratio of firing frequency number is usually 5 is to 1 and interference is a product of activation and recruitment so decreased activation we see in cns lesions pain and when the patient is uncooperative and reduced recruitment is seen in neurogenic causes and end stage muscle diseases early recruitment is typically typically seen in myopathies so these are few com uh, common interference pattern where we see that this is the neurogenic pattern this is a typically myopathic pattern and this is the pattern when we see that is uh, activation is very low so the few take home messages it's better to avoid emg in children if other means of diagnosis is present because children are mostly uncooperative rapidly it should be done to maximum yield there we should not depend on the protocol many a times should know the basic uh, of spontaneous activity and math characteristics and biopsy is to be done it may be determined by emg findings suppose we find uh, abnormal emg in one muscle we usually do the contralateral uh, limb same muscle uh, biopsy so we will show a video quickly okay we see a child this child had proximal uh, weakness uh, starting from the lower limbs so the emg procedure was being done the child was more or less cooperative we can see the calf hypertrophy in this child so the protocol uh, was done the you can see the this is the monitor and the needle has been connected so i'll just go rapidly because of lack of time so this is the emg needle the pediatric emg needle has been used the grounding has been fixed the tibialis anterior muscle is being sampled the child has been explained regarding the procedure So you see the needle. It has been cleaned. Because the video sound is not audible. first when we insert we have to see the insertional activity when it stabilizes we will look for the spontaneous activity when the needle is inserted at that point we look for the insertional activity it's normal insertional activity i can't show the sound this thing the baseline is being stabilized now we will look for any spontaneous activity we have to wait for actually 3 minutes but often in children they don't allow us so long so here the this is seen in uh, cascades or rasters now we have to see the fix it and see the duration the phases the amplitude and this the uh, interference pattern we, here we see the interference pattern is normal so this way we sample the muscles this child was cooperative for the first two muscles so we uh, utilized the time and uh, did the most important things uh, proximally we checked and the muscles which were spared we checked and after that we completed the study here the phases are counted like this the first deflection and we count like this 1 2 3 4 5 5 and uh, how many are seen so now after the lower limbs we started with upper limbs and found the similar findings 
and we always see this uh, thing in cascade so that we can assess the number of phases and the number of maps as well as the durations. So we will end uh, with there because uh, we are running out of time.